Good day. Welcome to IT314 Advanced Base System Student Activity Sheet number 11. Set up in testing environment and introduction to SQL or structured query language. Lesson objectives. At the end of this session, students should be able to 1. Know how to install and configure some server. This is for local hosting. So as our alternative platform, we need to use 000 webos for online hosting. Number two, familiarize oneself with the basic concept of SQL. Number three, understand the difference between DDL and DNL. Materials we have student activity sheet. Reference we have tutorials point website. Productivity, it is not always that we need to do more, but rather that we need to do focus on less from Nathan Morris. So before we proceed, I have prepared the checking active students, guess me, from 1 to 10, along the video, you can check the answers. So the purpose of this uh, guess me is to check whether you are active or not in the discussion. So please stay tuned, I will be enumerating the answers from 1 to 10. Along the video. So let's proceed. So introduction, your first is over. Your first term is over. And we are heading towards second period. Now we are now in the second period. Lessons learned in the first term will serve as your foundation for the succeeding topics. Today you will be discovering new topics that would help you in managing database. This includes the following to install and set up some server, like I said. We will be using the local host or web hosting. It is a 000 web host. It is a free software that we can use. Basic concept of structured query language or SQL. So, data manipulation language versus data definition language. So, this is wrong. Or DDL. For the activity 1, what I know chart, part 1. So, in what I know chart, can you answer what is the difference between SQL and MySQL? Number 2, why, why is SQL is important in managing database? 3, what is the difference between DDL and DML? So, for the main lesson, activity 2, content notes. What is my SQL. SQL. What, what is SQL? SQL? For the introductory of our lesson, can you watch this? this? Hi and welcome. We at 365 Data Science specialize in data science trainings. We post videos weekly so you can master indispensable skills for free. All right, let's get started. All right, great. One thing you'll notice when studying programming languages is that the concepts you encounter are interrelated. This means focusing on a single topic can hardly deliver the content that must be explained in its entirety. To this story, SQL makes no exception. Despite that, we must start from somewhere, right? My working experience tells me you will be much faster in learning and writing efficient queries if you go through a brief introduction to databases. It is the best thing to begin with. So, here's what I would like to share with you. The table you see here contains data about the customer cells of a furniture store. And this is how we should read this information. Purchase number one was registered on the 3rd of September, 2016. Then, customer number one bought the item with code A1. Each of the four elements has a specific meaning. We will call each one a data value. All four data values make up one record. A record is each entry that exists in a table. It corresponds to a row of the table. Therefore, these four data values form one record, and these data values regarding purchase number two form another record. You could use the terms row and record interchangeably. Besides the rows, you can see the data is separated into four columns or fields. A field is a column in a table containing specific information about every record in the table. This means all the records in a table, regardless if they are 10, 10,000, or 10 million, will have a certain purchase number, date of purchase, customer ID, and item information. 
When the data you have is organized in rows and columns, this means you are dealing with stored tabular data. That is important to mention because you will often see in the literature that database management relates to data stored in tabular form. Great. Here comes the more interesting part. In this table, we know nothing about a customer besides her ID. The information about customers is stored in another table called customers. There are several fields, such as first and last names, email address, and the number of times customers have filed a complaint in our store. So, what would the logic of that structure be? Every time we have a customer with an ID number one in the sales table, we can refer to the customer with ID number one in the customers table and see her name, email, and number of complaints filed. Same goes for the items table. It contains the item code, product description, its unit price, ID, and name of the company that has delivered it, and the company's headquarters phone number. Here, the connection between the sales table and the items table is not the customer ID, but the item code. Well, we could stuff this information into one table, and it would look like this. Ouch! It is huge! I would not want to imagine what the table would look like if we had registered over 10 rows. My point is, there are too many columns, and it is hard to understand what type of information is contained in the larger table. Relational algebra allows us to use mathematical logic and create a relation between a few tables in a way that allows us to retrieve data efficiently. Namely, these three tables, sales, customers, and items, are related through the customer ID or the item code columns and form a relational database. And, importantly, each one bears a specific meaning and contains data characterizing it. One of the tables contains information about sales, the other about customers, and the third about the items. To recap, remember the data values in a row form a record in a table, and each column represents a field that carries specific information about every record. A few related tables form a relational database. And for those of you who are interested in slightly more technical definitions, remember the smallest unit that can contain a meaningful set of data is called an entity. Therefore, the rows represent the horizontal entity in the table, the columns its vertical entity. The table is a bigger data entity on its own. It can also be referred to as a database object. A single row of a table, being a single occurrence of that entity, can be also called an entity instance. Okay, great. We will gradually build the theoretical preparation you need before you begin coding. Now that you know what a relational database is and have an idea about how it works, it is much easier to understand how SQL fits in the whole picture. SQL is the programming language you need to execute commands that let you create and manipulate a relational database. We will not delve into strict and detailed technical definitions to explain how it works. What you need to know is there are a few types of programming out there. Procedural, imperative, object-oriented, declarative, and functional. Although with some procedural elements, SQL is mainly regarded as a declarative programming language, it is non-procedural. This means, while coding, you will not be interested in how you want the job done. The focus is on what results you want to obtain. An abstract example would best clarify what we mean here. When using a procedural language, such as C or Java, you must explicitly divide the solution of a certain problem into several steps. For instance, 1. Please open the door. 2. Go outside. 3. Take the bucket I forgot there. 4. Bring it back to me. In a declarative language, this would sound like 1. Fetch the bucket, please, and you wouldn't have to go through the process step by step. The algorithms are built in, and there is an optimizer, which will separate your task into smaller steps and do the magic to bring the desired output. Why is this important? When using SQL, you should concentrate on what you want to retrieve from your databases. Unless you are an advanced user, don't bother with the algorithms explaining how your data can be obtained. Acknowledging SQL is principally a declarative language, now we can go through the main components of its syntax. It comprises a data definition language, known as DDL, a data manipulation language, abbreviated DML, a data control language, DCL, and a transaction control language, TCL. 
Okay, as you can see here, the central part of your screen is where you can create queries or SQL objects. In simple terms, it will be the area where you will be typing code. For example, I can type a line of code that will select all records of a table contained in a database. Okay, please don't pay too much attention to the code used in this video. For the moment, however, concentrate on the interface of MySQL Workbench. Here, you can see a small set of icons executing various functions. By clicking on the first one, you can get to a window from which you can select and open an existing SQL script. The second icon allows you to save the script on your computer, and so on. An important icon to remember is the one depicting a lightning. By pressing it, you can execute or run the code you've written. Let's try this. Bingo! A new block appeared in the middle of the screen. It is called the result grid. Although more often, you'll hear people referring to its content as the result set. Obviously here, you can see the data obtained after running the code we've written. It is accurate to say that, in the middle part of the screen, you can see the results obtained after executing your query. Finally, to close the result set, you must press the cross sign on the tab indicated down here. Alright! At the bottom of the screen, we can see the output section. It keeps track of all successfully or unsuccessfully executed operations in MySQL in a given session. For instance, we obtained an output last time, didn't we? That's why we see a little green circle with a tick mark over here and the number and time of the operation executed. You can see the exact action undertaken, a message from Workbench regarding this operation, and the time it took the server to reply to your query with an output. Lovely! On the left part of the screen is the Navigator section. It is relevant for advanced analysis and for more advanced database maintenance sessions. The subsection we will care about most in our course is the Schema section. It represents all available databases, their tables, and other related SQL tools and features. The upper right part of the screen contains three little squares that will allow you to hide or show the navigator. The output section or the SQL addition section where we can find more advanced features if necessary. You can use these buttons to adjust the program's interface according to your preferences. Great! Finally, beneath the section with Connections tabs, we can see a few small icons. They allow us to add various types of files and objects. When you hover over an icon, Workbench displays an explanation of what it does. As it says here, it will create a new SQL tab for executing queries. So, let's press this icon. You see? A new SQL tab opened. This is the place to start a new SQL script from scratch. Now that you have more than one SQL tab open, you'll need a single click over a tab's name to jump from one SQL script to the other. Easy, right? The second icon takes you to a window that allows you to select and then open existing SQL scripts. Go to the directory where you've stored the respective SQL script, select it, and then press the Open button. Amazing! This was an introduction to the main characteristics of MySQL Workbench. Please, play around with its interface. If you found this video interesting and want to gain an edge in your career, make sure to like... Okay. So let's go back. What is MySQL? MySQL is an oracle bank. Open Source Relational Database Management System, or RDBMS. Based on Structured Query Language, or SQL, MySQL runs on virtually all platforms including Linux, Unix, and Windows. 
Although it can be used in a wide range of applications, MySQL is most often associated with web applications and online publishing. What is SQL? SQL is Structured Query Language, which is a computer language for storing manipulating and retrieving data stored in relational database. SQL is the standard language for relational database system. All the relational database management system or RDBMS like MySQL, MS Access, Oracle, Seabase, Informex, Postgres, and SQL Server uses is SQL as their standard database language. So as our figure shows, SQL language statements, we have DML, its attributes is select, insert, update, and delete. DML means data manipulation language. And we have DDL, create, alter, and drop. DCL, we have grant, and rebook. So let's talk about the DML and DDL. Can you watch this? Hello friends, welcome to the video series on interview questions for PL SQL and SQL developers. In this video, we will see another standard question which is being asked in most of the fresher interview or for beginners. That is like, what is the difference between a DML and a DDL? So this is a very standard question, uh, almost like a, almost in every uh, PLSQL or SQL interview, you would have faced this interview if you are a fresher. And we will see few examples, then we will see what should be your formal answer in terms of interview aspect. Okay. Okay, uh, before starting, we'll first understand like uh, what are the types of SQL languages. So basically at a high level, SQL uh, commands are classified into five different uh, languages. The first one is like DDL. DDL stands for Data Definition Language. So this is the language which talks about how to create all the database objects. So typically we'll be having like four commands like create, alter, drop and truncate. Same way we have another language like DML. So DML language, DML stands for data manipulation language so here we are going to manipulate the data that is present in the table say so ddl is something like to manage the object whereas dml is something to manage the data what is stored and this is very much specific to the table data whereas ddl is at a very wide level it's like managing all the database objects okay so here basically we'll have comments like insert update delete and merge so we have few other comments though uh, this is not part of this video we will just let just let us know what are all the comments the next is like a dcl there is like a data control language here we have basically a grant and revoke uh, statement the next is like a tcl this transaction control language we have commit rollback and save point the next is like dr that is data ritual nothing but the select statement okay so except the dml uh, TCL and DRL, uh, rest of all, almost rest of all can be considered like a data definition language. Now we'll see few examples, then we'll see what should be your formal answer in terms of interview. As I told, okay. before we proceed in our checking up students, students, number one answer is Q. Number, number two, two answer, answer A. Number, number three, three answer, answer A. A. Number, number four J, J as in dark. dark. And number, number five the third T, T as in tiger. tiger. Let, Let us proceed. Uh, create, alter, drop and truncate. All these comments are like a DDL that is data definition language comment. So basically create will help us to create a table or any other object. So in this example, I am creating a table. If at all you want to add some additional column to the table, you can use the alter command like this if at all you want to drop the existing column you can again use the alter command and you can say whatever the column you want to drop same way if you don't want any data from the table you can truncate the table using truncate table table name finally in case if you don't want the table itself you can drop the table entire table so all these things are like uh, 
DDL command. So don't think that DDL commands are just specific to the table object. It's it's not. It, in fact, it is common for all the object. Now we'll see one more example where we are going to create a function. As you can see here, we are using the create keyword to create the function. Same way, if you don't want the function, you can say drop function function name. So here also the create function or drop function, all these things are like DDL command. We'll see one more example. As you can see here, I'm trying to create a sequence. So here we are using a create command again, saying create sequence sequence name. So here the sequence is created. If at all we want to change, see by default when an object gets created, the default parameters will be set. So using the alter command, we can go and change the default properties. So in this case, I'm changing the uh, increment by property of the sequence by default the increment value will be one that is the sequence will get incremented by one in case if you want the sequence to be incremented by thousand you can alter the sequence okay finally if you don't want the sequence you can just drop the sequence see all these things are uh, i just want to show you that uh, ddl commands are not just specific to table or something it is just common across all the database objects now we'll see what should be your formal answer uh, from an interview aspect okay we'll start with ddl that is the data definition language commands as i told ddl statements are used for defining the database objects and also for managing the database objects and this is applicable for all the database objects like table view synonym sequence table space users materialized views all these objects okay so you can create you can modify the structure of the object you can find if in case if you don't want you can drop it the next is ddl statements work on the whole object for example when i say the truncate table table name it truncates the entire content of the table we cannot say that truncate only a portion of a data so we cannot say that so all these ddl commands will act on the whole object it won't act on the partial object it, it just act on the whole object itself the third very important point we cannot have a where condition as part of a ddl statement whenever we execute a ddl statement it just as in it's very similar to the previous statement it will just act on the whole object the next part is this is very important because this point is very much expected in the interview all the ddl commands are auto commit commands that means whenever a ddl statements get executed it, it automatically committed we cannot roll back it if you want to revert back then you need to again apply an alter command to revert a change what you have just made okay so there is no point of uh, committing or roll backing here automatically all the ddl things will get committed the next point is DDL uh, commands will make the DDL triggers execute. In case if there is a DDL trigger is defined, this DDL triggers will get executed or invoked. Okay. Now we'll see from a DML point of view. Okay. Uh, see, as I told, DDL of DDL commands are more specific at an object level, whereas DML commands are more specific at a data level. The two, the data stored in the table. These DML commands are not specific to any object. It's just specific only to the table the next is dml statements work on a specific selected data set if you want we can work on the whole data set or we can say i want to delete only a portion of a record or i want to remove or update only particular record so you can you can say that you can define like on what data set you want to apply this dml for the next point is here is another very important point we'll be using a var condition to filter the data to select whatever the data set so basically var conditions can be used with the dml statement the next very very important point all the dml statements are not auto commit command it explicitly has to be committed or rolled back that is where we'll be using the transaction control language commands like commit or rolled back okay so this is very important point the next is like we have a similar to a ddl trigger we have a dml trigger so which will get invoked whenever any dml uh, event occurs in the database so we have two uh, triggers one is like a dml trigger and also compound trigger so compound triggers are nothing but the same dml trigger put it into a single trigger block so that is a compound trigger so from interview aspect uh, mainly uh, you need to concentrate on this auto commit because uh, uh, this particular keyword might be expected obviously you need to say this then uh, you need to say uh, where condition point then th these two points the first four points are actually very much important okay so uh, make it very clear because this is a very very basic question and uh, this will clearly say uh, 
how much you know the basics of the uh, sql language i just want to give you a, uh, just a little bit more about a detail comment so here i just given as per the object this as you can see here we have like create table drop table alter table that is to modify the structure of a table guess me number 6 letter c guess me number 6 letter c 7 e number 8 letter f and truncate table to completely remove the table or you can say create global temporary table so all these things are like a table specific for dl commands so next is like a sequence specific you create a sequence or alter a sequence finally if you don't want you drop a sequence so here is like pl sql related something like a create a procedure or a function similarly you, you if you don't want you can just drop the procedure and function so here is like you can say alter session to set whatever the session specific parameters we can create and drop the java related objects so here are like trigger related you can create a trigger drop trigger or alter the trigger part same way like synonym related create a synonym if you don't want you can just drop it similarly like view related uh, ddl command so something like index related schema related even a create user alter user drop user all these things also like ddl commands only like grant revoke create database all these commands okay so this will just give an idea like ddl commands are not just specific to a table it's it's a common command which is applicable for all the database objects so here is a list of dml and dml commands are very specific insert update delete and merge and one key point to be noted here is that all the dml statements has to be explicitly committed or rolled back and one more very very important question sometimes people will be asking if a dml statement is followed by a ddl statement what would happen the answer is very simple uh, whenever a dml statement is followed by a ddl statement the ddl statement will automatically commit all the uncommitted transactions previously so this should be your answer so make your points very clear because this is very basic question in case if you want to uh, want any uh, pl sql uh, questions to be answered you can just share in your okay characteristics of sql this is features of sql make sql sql a most powerful tool hence here are some of the major sql features which, which makes, makes it a successful database programming language a high performance number 2 high availability 3 scalability and flexibility 4 robust transactional support 5 high security 6 comprehensive application development 7 management is 8 open source to better understand the basic concept of sql refer to the okay so for the activity three skill building activities with the necessary okay follow the following structure to get the story together okay as our alternative we will be using a what they call uh, 000 web host account In this regard, regard, we need to go to your zero 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 post account. As our directory, I will give you an idea for this. Manage website. Then tools. Then here we can check the database manager. And here it is. So, so we, can we can create, create new, new database. database. For example, I T E I T E three one one four underscore D B B. You see me? I'm 
let's create the password Save your account. Wait, Wait until, until it's done. done. For your For information, information database, database manager, manager here you, you can create, create and manage, manage all your database. Database space limit 1 GB. Database, database table limit 100 tables. And, and manage, manage your database at this. Use, Use local nodes as, as a connection. connection. So to manage, all you, you need to do is click the manage and then the pitch gmail ID. Okay. okay. So, so we are now, now we have, have successfully, successfully created or accessed the PHP mail where we can manipulate or practice the DML, the data manipulation language, DDL, data definition language, and then DCL. Okay, so this is our database. Okay. So, so that's, that's how, how it is. is. Again, okay. uh, SQL, uh, SQL or structured query language is being used to retrieve uh, data, data from, from our PHP my admin. So, so we will be eating uh, will will separate, separate activity, activity for this for now. now. For the benefit of our, our module number 11, so let us finish this one. Again, the answer is yes, me number 9, letter E. Letter E is the answer in uh, guess me number 9. Activity 4, what I know chart. So kindly of answer the, the section of what I know. Check to understanding, understanding two minutes, minutes based, based from the content notes, notes provided what is being asked in each number. number. Write, Write your answers, answers on the space provided. Number, number one, a category of SQL which allows users user to create and then structure the database objects. objects. What, what is that? that? Number, number two, a category of SQL which allows the users to control access to data within the database. Number three, it is used in application, application development, development language to enable the programmer to work with the data. data. And number four, four components of the four components included in is SQL process. process. What are those components? So for so the lesson number up, can I answer the date, the target, and then the action plan.
Koalisi dan terak dan ini terak. Faculty ask question why is SQL so powerful? Answer: SQL is powerful because it is the primary language that is used to manage large databases or organization joins. It is SQL allows users to ingest data from multiple sources and compare the same to make required changes. SQL makes it possible for database personnel to manage the databases with minimal effort. Number two, is SQL easy to learn? Answer: Yes, it is easy to learn SQL. As it is not a programming language itself, rather it is a query language. Most SQL syntaxes are like the English language, and therefore almost everyone who understands English can write SQL. Okay. So that's the end of our module number eleven. Again, guess me. Number 10, answer is letter F. Guess me. Number 10, answer is letter F as in fly. Okay, so thank you so much and have a nice day everyone.